In this video I'm going to be using up some of this rubber wood salvaged from an old broken bed frame which featured in a previous video to make a Tetris style wooden puzzle game as a birthday present for my niece Tabby. I started by planning how I would make each of the Tetris blocks. The wood I have measures just over 20mm thick so I'm going to use a 20mm grid pattern to get the size for each of the blocks. One of the blocks will need a 2x2 grid measuring 40x40mm, 40 three of the blocks will require a 3x2 grid measuring 60x40mm, and one block will need a 4x1 grid measuring 80x20mm. And I happen to have a piece of wood which already measured 80x20, so I can put that to one side as it's ready to go. But the rest of the blocks all need to be twice as thick, so here I am sanding away the old wood finish that was on this wood so that the glue will adhere to the wood properly, and then I can laminate and clamp two layers together. After a few hours once the glue was dry I can then rip clean edges onto these blocks at the table saw. And then I run that clean edge against the fence and cut the blocks to their final width, i.e. some at 60 and some at 40mm. Then I can cut clean ends to all of the blocks at the mitre saw. I cut all of my material just very slightly oversized, so you can see here that the blocks are about half a millimetre to a millimetre bigger than necessary. And that's because I want to use the thickness planer to accurately get them down to their final size. And it's also going to help clean up the faces of the blocks, because as you can see this rubber wood is quite prone to grain tear out. So I run the blocks through with light passes, removing just a small amount of material each time, and then check again with the calipers, and I can keep making light passes until they're down to the size I need. I managed to get this one exactly 60mm, others weren't so accurate. You can see this one is about a tenth of a millimetre below 40mm, but that's close enough. And then I can mark up the material that I need to remove from each block, so I'm using my combination square set to 20mm to get it nice and accurate. To cut the shapes I'm going to use the table saw but first I want to swap over my combi blade to a flat grind grooving blade. I'll leave a link in the description box for this blade. I need to set the height of the blade to 20mm and then I can line up the blade with where I want to remove material and start making cuts. As some of these blocks are symmetrical I can just flip the workpiece and make the same cut again to the other side. And with the fence still set, I can make cuts to some of the other blocks too. And then I can just keep moving the fence a little at a time, taking more material away. This worked pretty well, although after removing most of the material from some of the blocks like this one here, I needed to think about how to cut the last piece away safely, and for this I swapped back to my combi blade, rotated the block on its side and just carefully cut away that last bit using the push sticks to keep my hands well away from the blade. Then I can do a little bit of clean up with a chisel just to remove any splintery bits. I can then sand each block nice and smooth. And I added a small chamfer to the edges using a block plane just to remove the hard edge and make the blocks feel nicer in the hand and more child friendly. I set up a bit of MDF on the mitre saw fence just to give me a zero clearance kerf to help me get clean cuts. And here I'm also marking up how thick I want my blocks to be, and I want them to be quite thick so that they're strong enough to cope with being thrown around. So I went for 20mm and I could start making the cuts. Here you can see I've got a really nice clean cut with very little tear out. The cuts to some of the other shaped blocks weren't so clean though, as some of the faces weren't referencing against that fence. This part was definitely the most tedious part, adding a small chamfer to round over the sharp edges, and I did that with an electric file held in my vise with dust extraction attached. It took quite a long time to do all of the blocks. I had some of this acrylic paint which I can use to add colour, and I'm rubbing it on with a cloth with the idea of using it like a stain rather than a paint. I was thinking that I could keep the wood grain visible beneath the colour, although in the end the paint opacity was higher than I expected. Next I could arrange the blocks into a rectangle, and that was much more difficult than I expected actually. This isn't going to be an easy puzzle for an adult, let alone a child, but I'm sure my niece will still enjoy messing around with it. I took some measurements so that I can build a frame for it to sit in. 
and I found this piece of oak veneered plywood which I can use for my backing board but I need to cut this slightly larger than the puzzle because I'm going to be rebating a frame around this board and I'll also need a couple of millimeters of play so that the blocks can move around freely. These bits of rubber wood also came from the bed frame and I decided to use these to make the frame but first I want to rip the angle off the edge at the table saw but I'll keep the part with the rounded edges. I'm going to cut a rebate to accommodate the plywood at the router table so I set up a straight bit and took two passes to get it to the depth I needed. And the plywood will fit in it like this leaving a small reveal around the frame. I also wanted to add a roundover to the corner that didn't currently have one so I fitted a roundover bit and cut that too. Here I'm offering up the frame pieces and I can mark the position of them onto the plywood and I can use those pencil marks to figure out where my mitres need to be cut. Once all the cuts are made I added glue and used masking tape stretched over the joints to pull them together. And when the glue was dry I sanded away the old finish and got all the mitres nice and flush. You can see here that my mitres were not as perfect as I'd have liked them to be, I don't think my niece will mind though. I had thought that my mitre saw fence was dialed in perfectly but maybe it took a knock at some point. Then after a bit of sanding I can glue in my plywood. And when the glue was dry I added my maker's mark to the back. I printed out some text on my printer and I'm going to have a go at engraving this into the frame so I stick it where I want it using a glue stick and then with a straight bit in my router I carefully follow the letters. This is never going to be perfect, it's always going to look a bit homemade as I'm no human CNC but that's fine. And I can use a chisel just to refine any areas where I went wrong. I get those letters painted too and then wait for it to dry before sanding away the excess and blow away the dust. Finally I can get some finish applied and for small fiddly jobs like this I like to use acrylic spray varnish as it dries quickly and I'm going to have to turn all of these blocks over a few times in between coats to make sure I get good coverage. After the first coat I denib with some 400 grit just to keep them smooth before applying a final coat. And this acrylic varnish is safe for toys once it's cured. Thank you. <laughs> it's Tabby Tetris. What colour? Green. 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 Yeah. What colour is this? Blue. Blue. Empty. Empty. <laughs> <Tabby. laughs> <laughs> Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos if you'd like to help support the channel and also get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists and a name credit at the end of my videos. You'll find links to my Patreon page and YouTube channel membership in the description box below. Thanks for watching.